All right, guys, this is going to be our lesson for pronouns. Pronoun is a two-part lesson. We will be learning about uh, the first four types of pronouns. Um, so when the part two notes come out, they will be on the second four. So there's a total of eight different types of pronouns. Uh, if you're looking at the definition, it defines a pronoun as a word that takes place of a noun. So for example, uh, mom could be replaced with the pronoun she. So mom is just a regular noun and she is a pronoun. Another way to look at it would be uh, like if you were to say dog and then you replace it with the pronoun it. So sometimes pronouns are confusing for students, but you guys use them all the time in both your written and spoken English. It's more of kind of understanding the differences between the different kinds. Um, it can also be a group. So if you're looking at the definition here, a group of words acting as a noun or another pronoun. So for example, uh, Tom and Jerry can be translated to they. So it can be an individual person or animal or item or a group of words. Now, it's kind of confusing the way that they word this, but there is a word or a group of words that the pronoun refers to that is the antecedent. Um, it must agree in both number and gender. So it doesn't really make sense until I go over the examples below. So just kind of track along um, till you get to the bottom of the examples. Sentence number one, when she was still a young girl, Sylvia Plath decided to become a writer. She is my pronoun. I'm just going to write P for pronoun. And Sylvia Plath is my proper noun. She replaces Sylvia Plath. If you didn't use the pronoun, it would read, when Sylvia Plath was still a young girl, Sylvia Plath decided to become a writer. So one of the reasons we have pronouns is to help uh, not be so repetitive in both spoken and written English. So if you wanna make a little note over here on the side, <clears throat> actually make, for sure make this note because this helps cl uh, clarify a lot of things. The use of pronouns helps both written and spoken English to sound less repetitive. Okay. Let's look at a second example. Remember with the grammar videos, you can pause and rewind as needed at your own pace. Sentence number two, George Orwell wrote Animal Farm in 1980, I'm sorry, wrote Animal Farm and 1984 in the 1940s. Both remain immensely popular today. Both is our pronoun and it is replacing the two titles of the books, which are both proper nouns. If you look at the little explanation, both replaces Animal Farm and 1984. Now here's how the sentence would read if I didn't use the pronoun. George Orwell wrote Animal Farm and 1984 in the 1940s. Animal Farm and 1984 remain immensely popular today. Once again, the pronoun helps break up your written and spoken English and make it less repetitive. Last example, 
Phyllis Wheatley published her first poem at the age of 16 and soon found herself a celebrity. Now notice, both are pronouns, but if we look up here, it can replace another pronoun. Sorry, I'm going to redo that line. Okay, it can replace another pronoun. It can be a noun that it replaces, or it can be another pronoun. So, her and herself take the place of the proper noun Phyllis Wheatley. In this sentence, there just happens to be two. Okay, so if I didn't use her and herself, it would read, Phyllis Wheatley published Phyllis Wheatley's first poem at the age of 16 and soon found Phyllis Wheatley a celebrity. This one actually would not make sense without using the pronouns, and we'll get to the different kinds in a minute. There are a limited number of pronouns. There are 75. They fall into one or more of the following categories. We're going to number in red. We're going to learn about number one today, personal. Number two, possessive. Reflexive and intensive. Next grammar packet, we'll go over demonstrative interrogative, relative, oops, and indefinite. So the four that we're learning today, I'm just gonna mark them so that way it's clear, are personal and possessive, reflexive and intensive, okay? Don't worry about the exercises right now, don't cross them out, we will come back to this. Um, but let's move down to where it says personal and possessive. A personal pronoun refers to a specific person or thing by indicating the person speaking, first person, the person being spoken to, second person, or any other person or thing being spoken about, third person. Now we've talked about keeping first and second person out of our writing. And the reason for that is because we are trying to remain objective in written English. When we are talking, however, or doing a journal, first and second person works because it's kind of a difference between academic and more casual language. This is a chart that you will want to memorize. Notice that this row right here is first person. We have second person here. And we have third person here. Singular and plural. Okay. These ones indicate two or more. And these ones are just one. Okay. Down here, they give us nice sentence examples. So for example, in the first sentence, it says, Thomas went with me to the game. This is indicating the person that's speaking. The person that is speaking went to the game with Thomas. The second person example reads, ask Gina to show you the article. You refers to the pe person being addressed. Another way to think of addressed is who is being spoken to. The third person example says he gave them a poor excuse. He and them are both people being discussed. Someone else outside of he and them are talking about those two people. Third person singular pronouns do express gender. He and him are masculine and she and her are feminine. Notice that it is neuter, which means neither masculine nor feminine. So if I were to say, if I was talking about a plate of tacos, and I said, please 
hand me it. It can refer to the taco on the plate. And tacos do not have a gender. So sometimes if you have just met someone who has a baby or is pregnant and you refer to the child as it, they might be a little offended because we typically will use it to describe animals, like if you didn't know the gender or uh, objects within a house or you know anywhere in your life that you need to discuss and refer to an object. So please hand me it. If you used that, don't use it when discussing a baby, right? It's kind of like a funny joke when people uh, refer to babies as that. So moving on to the next category, we have possessive pronouns. So up here, just write type number one, personal pronouns. Down here, we're moving into type number two, which is possessive. Okay, we have our singular and our plural. The rows run across. We have first and second person as well as third person, and this shows that someone is possessing something. Their car, your shoe, my hat, his vehicle. All of these words show ownership of something. The first form of each pronoun in the preceding chart can be used before the noun. The second form is used alone, like a noun. So for example, this is her radio. Her is going before the noun. Sorry, I've been using blue for nouns. And her is our pronoun. Its battery is new. It Whoever it is, whatever it is, is possessing the battery. And this one, this is what they mean by second. It's a bad arrow. They're meaning the second in this list. Okay, are used as objects. Uh, uh, can be used like a noun. So this radio is hers. She is possessing the radio, but notice that in this particular section, it is after the noun. So the noun is radio, and the pronoun is hers. So the second words listed in the chart can all be used alone, acting as a noun. I'm sorry, acting like a noun. Okay? If you have questions on this, please make sure that you come and ask me, get some clarification. Once again, just scroll past the worksheet parts. We're not working on that right now. And we're gonna go down to type number three. So type number three are reflexive. And type number four is intensive. Now these ones are tricky. So you might need to rewatch this section a few times. Um, but I would for sure pay attention here because these are the ones that take a little bit more uh, attention to detail. You form reflexive and intensive pronouns by adding self or selves. Notice that this is singular and this is plural. Myself and our selves are first person. Second person always has the you in it. Okay yourself and yourselves and then we have third person singular himself herself itself as well as themselves now note and this is where students get confused the words are the same for both categories all of these words are reflexive and intensive the part that plays a role is uh the placement within the sentence as well as the emphasis. So I'm gonna walk you through it. I just kinda of wanna point this out. So for example, a reflexive pronoun refers or reflects back to a noun or pronoun used earlier in the sentence. This always adds information. For example, I almost exhausted myself 
working for her in the campaign. Myself is reflecting back to the subject of the sentence. The way I can check this, and let me just double check before I misspeak. <clears throat> if I were to take out a reflexive sent, uh, pronoun, so let's say that I just took this and scribbled it out. I almost exhausted working for her in the campaign. It does not make sense, okay? When you take out a reflexive pronoun, the sentence no longer is complete and it is a confusing statement. So over here on the side, if taken out, sentence will not make sense. That applies to reflexive only. I'm gonna draw a big purple star and draw a big purple star here so you don't forget. Let's look at the second example. Today, for the first time in months, she is herself. Herself is reflecting back to a certain pronoun. Note over here, I forgot to do it on number one, I is a pronoun, she is a pronoun. If you look at the top of our notes, they always replace other pronouns, specifically personal and possessive. If I were to cross out herself, today for the first time in months, she is. Looking at my note, if it's taken out of the sentence, it will not make sense. Last example for reflexive. As a team, they have no faith in themselves. Themselves is reflecting back to the pronoun they. If I were to cross it out, as a team, they have no faith in. If you're looking at this sentence as is, you're asking no faith in what? Referring to my rule over here, if I take a reflexive pronoun out of the sentence, it will not make sense. Now we're moving on to intensive pronouns. This is the fourth type. It is different than the reflexive pronoun, but they all use the same words. So for example, an intensive pronoun adds emphasis to another noun or pronoun. It does not add information to the sentence. And if it is taken out, the meaning of the sentence will still be the same. This is super important. I can take out an intensive pronoun and the sentence will still be fine. So over here on the side, can take out intensive pronoun. Okay, if I take it out, the sentence is still fine. It can survive on its own. So the sample down here says, oh, sorry, one more bullet point. An intensive pronoun is often placed directly after its antecedent. Okay, if you don't remember what an antecedent is, go back to the first page and reread your notes. It is the word that it is replacing, so that way we're not repetitive. Instead of saying, uh, Mrs. Grady left her keys in the car, if I were to not use a pronoun, it would say Mrs. Grady left Mrs. Grady's keys in the car. And that's repetitive. So instead of being repetitive, we would add in the word her. Right here, okay, it says you yourself told me to stop. You is a pronoun, so is yourself. It is, ref it is uh, adding emphasis to the word you. And if I were to cross it out, you told me to stop. It would still be fine. The sentence would still make sense. I know it's intensive because of how I checked it. Sample number two, Rita herself met us. Rita is my pronoun, so is herself. I am adding emphasis to Rita. If I cross out herself, Rita met us, it's totally fine. Rita met us. It just adds emphasis. It gives a little bit more extra information. 
The one thing I don't want you to get uh, tripped up on is the location of the sentence. Sometimes it's right next to the antecedent. Sometimes, however, it's very spread apart, and the only way you will get it right is by checking if you can take it out or not. So I breaked, I'm sorry, I baked the bread myself. It is reflecting back to the personal pronoun I. If I were to cross it out, I could end the sentence there. I baked the bread. So I would know it's intensive. Second example, we will bake it ourselves. We is a pronoun. Ourselves is a pronoun. If I were to cross it out, we will bake it. It would make sense and I would know that it was an intensive pronoun. Please feel free to ask follow-up questions on this part. Uh, reflexive and intensive pronouns are probably uh, the most difficult for students, but once you do a couple samples, it seems to go pretty well for everyone. Um, if you're looking back at the top, don't forget we had two previous topics, personal and possessive, and you will need to um, have these notes out with you uh, when we complete the grammar worksheet. Remember, if you need a reminder about antecedents, it is on the first page. Remember, pause and rewind as much as you need. And then if you need help in class, please don't hesitate to ask any questions. Thank you, guys.